I'll tell you what's nice, a brew in a van with ca multi-camera setup. Bloody hell. Technologically incredible. Mate, I couldn't have said it better <laughs> myself. So hi everyone, welcome to Colleagues Getting Coffee in Bert, Levan, Levan, where? Not Duvin. Duvin, <laughs> uh, Bouvin. Uh, I'm here with the incredible Lou Bowditch. Hello, hello. She's right here. Um, and today we're talking about challenge. So tell us a little bit about challenge because you've got an interesting story of finding a bit of challenge around like what you should do. So tell us a little bit about that first. Um, interesting, eclectic career. Mm -hmm. um, so taking sort of the personal element out of it, my biggest challenge has been finding something that I love to do, that I want to do, mm -hmm. and that in the process helps other people. So I've kind of been on that journey for a while. I've been a photographer in the past, I've been a florist, loved it, great, really creative, enjoyed that element, but nothing really was satisfying, I suppose, a bigger purpose. Mm. And I still hadn't really found the thing that I really wanted to do. So I've been challenged multiple times over a, quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And I suppose what's got me through is tenacity. Yeah. So tenacity has helped me keep on going until I found something that I love. And um, so what is the thing you love? It's hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so off camera peeps you don't know this but we've been having a right old chin wag about hypnotherapy haven't we we have and actually one of your approaches funnily enough uses the term challenge again is that you would you choose to challenge your clients on, I do. on ways of thinking I and do. where things come from so tell us a little bit about that because people might be like hypnotherapy schnip the therapy <laughs> well it's something that I've come to relatively well, it, the whole hypnotherapy bag is something that I've come to relatively late in my career, but I'm so glad that I've got here. And I'm always learning. I learn so much from my clients. And as I'm learning, my confidence is growing. Mm. And because my confidence is growing in what I'm doing, I'm able to now change my approach to some things. And, you know, the more clients I work with, the more insight I get into, you know, that what really works and what helps people, uh, etc. So recently I've started to challenge my clients because mm. I'm feeling more confident in myself yeah. and I think that's the key I feel confident in what I'm doing therefore I'm able to ask those questions that might make my clients feel uncomfortable mm. and it's feeling and it's encouraging them and holding space for them so that it can feel those uncomfortable feelings and thoughts but know that it's going to pass and yeah. that the work that we're doing, you know, kind of, you have to go through the, I don't know, the, the nitty gritty, the quagmire. You have to go through that kind of uncomfortable slog, mm -hmm. kind of really feel it, discuss it, examine it, look at it from different angles, etc. And then you come out the other side and it has passed. And not only has it passed, it's really then changed what happens in the future, in your future, because you've been challenged, because... Uh, who, I can't remember, who is it who says the definition of insanity is doing the same thing time and time again and expecting, expecting a different same. outcome? Yeah, is yeah, it yeah, Einstein? Yeah, yeah, expecting a different yeah. result, yeah, for yeah. sure. So with that in mind, you know, I've started to challenge my clients and say, yeah, but have has what you've been doing for a long time, because lots of people come to me and they've mm. had these issues for a long time. It's not just something that's happened in the last, you know, three weeks or six weeks. Mm. You know, they've said, I've, I've had this for as long as I can remember, or it's always been a challenge, or I've been struggling for, you know, years and years. And so I then have decided that, well, you know, I've got to make them realise that if they carry on their train of thought, their self, you know, their sort of self-limiting beliefs or their set patterns of behavior because of how the brain works which is amazing it's all kind of based in neuroscience really mm. so i'm a clinical hypnotherapist so i sort of talk about how the brain works and because of how the brain works in fact challenging people in a secure safe compassionate mm. way is a great way to get them to sort of you know have a different perspective i think challenge approach like applies to everything though doesn't it yeah. because if we constantly think about things in our own way i mean I'm doing loads of work at the moment on a course in miracles and it's actually kind of challenging me to think about how much meaning I give to everything 
and how actually every single thing is from my own perspective. So, yeah. and we're all in that journey on our own. I mean, I remember doing a course uh, years ago, and the lady in the room made us all imagine an elephant. And we, you know, I assumed everyone would just imagine the elephant I imagined. And then we opened our eyes and we talked about, and we had 15 different elephants. And I was like, my God, like everything is so from your point mm. of view um, that actually we should be challenged and, and prodded a little bit. Before we recorded, you said something about what if. Mm. Tell me a bit more about that. So the what if, it, again, it's something that I've um, learnt relatively recently. And, and I'm, I'm okay about that. That's really interesting. You know, my self-assurance has grown enough to not worry that I'm still learning. Mm. And that's great because that so much sort of relief comes with that. So a relatively new thing that I've learned is to question a client and, and also my own thoughts. Mm. It's not just something that I'm applying to my clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely helping me every step of the way. Is to ask, what if? Yeah. What if something could be easy mm. and effortless? What if something amazing could mm. happen yeah. by a different way of thinking or a different perspective or you know whatever, whatever it is in context of what we're chatting about? Um, and that's interesting because in contradiction to another um, technique that I've learnt, what if can actually be, when it's coming from a client perspective, something that keeps someone stuck. Mm. They kind of go round and round in circles because they're always worried about, well, what if this happens and what if that happens? Nothing's happened yet, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they're always projecting forward in time. Um, it's kind of part of anxiety. and Well, there's always a negative bias as well, yeah. isn't there? Like, we're so negatively hardwired. Yeah. And it's so... Why, is, why are we negatively hardwired? Well, it's 80%. Of, of us is negative mm. and it's to do with the primitive brain and sort of um, you know our like uh, pri factor. primeval you yeah. know, sort of um, ancestors the caveman cave woman if you like an evolution and we've kept that part of our brain mm. so it's like if you think of it as <clears throat> I don't know the first um, so the first computers mm. you know um, that was the say that's the equivalent of the primitive brain we've had numerous 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 updates but you don't take out. The original You cannot system. uninstall. Oh, that's so fascinating. Yeah, so, and so everything's piled on top. And the reason yeah, yeah. why we have a primitive brain, which is kind of central, um, obviously without images, it's a bit difficult to describe, but it's sort of central and towards the bottom of the brain. Yeah. And then, you know, also the squiggly, whirly bit on top. That's the neocortex. So that's all of our updates. Oh, OK. So the reason why it's so... Um, crinkled and sort of that uh, wiggly pattern and all over the folds of it and everything so because we've we've grown so much we've learnt so much yeah. but we still have the original part of our primitive brain which we which we share with other animals mm. whereas this neocortex yeah that's the part that we don't share with other animals that's the bit that allows us to learn to fly a plane learn language yeah. speak a foreign language drive a car that kind of thing yeah just going to let the viewers know that we are in literally <laughs> probably a yellow weather warning gale currently. So in case the cameras are rocking, which they are. <laughs> yeah, I think we're rocking too. Oh we? my God. Just so you know, we're not about to take off. We are sturdy in a van, but uh, yeah, FYI. Yeah. Um, so what can people do who are watching who think, right, yeah, cool. I don't, I'm not ready to get someone to challenge me. How can I challenge myself? What can they do? Is there anything that they can start this journey to unpick some of their thinking or even sort of maybe simple t hypnotherapy tricks that they can, what would you suggest, anything? I think, I think the first thing is for people who can see a recurring pattern of behavior. Mm. And if that recurring pattern of behavior is something that brings them suffering of some sort, mm. You know, that's kind of like the first step to notice it. Yeah. Like you say, some people aren't ready to notice it. Some people, oh, they notice it, but they're not ready to accept it. And it's embarrassing, it. shameful. They don't want to yeah. tell anyone else. Yeah, yeah they yeah. don't, they don't, yeah, they, for whatever reason, yeah. um, you know, their own world view or their experience, their conditioning has meant oh. that they don't really want to get help or, yeah. you know, discuss it or let anyone know that they're struggling. So I think noticing any repetitive behavior that results in a negative feeling or mm. a negative state is probably the very first step. I think the second step also is perhaps, I haven't really thought about this till now, let me just have a think. I think writing things down, mm. 
bit of automatic journaling, really. You know when they sort of channeling, you're literally yeah, yeah. you're just dumping everything out onto a piece of paper. Mm. Yeah, and I think that what that does, if you do that when an uncomfortable feeling comes up, yeah. you're not pushing it away because pushing it away only makes it come out elsewhere. Well, you've got to shine a light on it, haven't you? Mm. Bring it out to the light. Yeah. And this, what you've just said about that really strikes a chord with me because I've started this journal at the beginning of the year. It's basically a diary and every day I write in it. And recently I found it really difficult to maintain any sort of healthy lifestyle, fitness, diet, etc. Mm. But also kick wine. Like I love wine so much. <laughs> Everybody loves wine. Oh my God. I love it more than everyone. Um, but I wrote in this journal every day and I read it and it sounded like I like a lunatic wrote it because every day I'd go round in the same set I'd be like oh, I feel really engaged today I'm really motivated oh, I'm really sad today because I drank wine I feel really blue and like I feel unproductive next day oh I've had an amazing idea I feel great and I was like good grief I'm just going round and round and mm. round but reading it in my own hand made me think mm. I've got to change mm. and I did yeah because well I probably I'm much better, like 90% there, but because I could see my own voice saying, what the hell are you doing? Mm. Why are you just doing this over and over and over? Mm. Well, because of how the brain works, we are wired, if you like, for repeating the same mistakes again and again. Mm. You know, lots of people might recognize, they say, I don't know, maybe they always get into relationships where, which result in them being with a certain kind of person that doesn't make them happy or fulfilled, mm. doesn't bring them any joy. Maybe they always, I don't know, take the wrong kind of jobs or, you know, there's so many different things that we can have in our lives which are, you know, are just repetition. Mm. You know, it might not be exactly the same thing, but we're following a pattern. And the reason that happens is because the primitive brain is not creative mm. in the same way that, you know, it can't, can't think of any sort of innovative ideas and solutions. So what it does, it, it pattern matches mm. and it repeats the same behavior. And, you know, there's a, a very well-known term, I'm sure you, you may have heard of it yourself, and that is neurons that fire together, wire together. Uh, okay. And basically it's based on something, a principle called Hebbian, Hebbian's law or Hebbian's principle and what they're what it sort of part of neuroscience is that when something happens and we have a reaction you know mm -hmm. whether that's come a response from our sort of primitive mind or our sort of logical rational thinking um it kind of forms a template mm -hmm. very quickly yeah. and then like grooves on a vinyl someone yeah. said to me once i yeah. think and it's very difficult to scratch that and do a different yeah yeah you have to kind of you have to sort of I think having some knowledge and understanding of why we then behave in a certain way. Mm. I mean, you can think of it as a template, yeah. as, a as a matrix or whatever. You know, there's lots of different ways you can explain it. Um, one way that I explained it, um, you know, I explain it to clients is if it's like you have a, a beautiful field of long, tall grass oh. and you, you, it, you know, it hasn't been trodden on. It's, you know, it's just grown, been left fallow for years and all of a sudden you discover it and you walk across it once and you're taking in the surrounding and it's really beautiful. And you look back, you get to the other side of the field and you look back and there's nothing. Mm. Not really anything to indicate that you've even been there. Mm. And you're like, oh my God, I love this. I'm gonna come back tomorrow. So you come up the next day and you walk across exactly the same, you kind of from this tree to this tree, you walk across the path and you look back, sort of taking in the view and you go, oh look, I think I can just about see where I've been. Next day you come back and you take the same route weeks, days later, mm. weeks later, until there is a very well-worn, trodden path yeah, yeah, yeah. from A to B that mm. you've taken every day ever since. And that's kind of a very basic yeah. sort of description of what happens. So those neurons eventually, that, that behavior, that automatic behavior yeah. is wired. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's why so, so many of us find it difficult to then make those changes, even if we want to, and we know yeah. they're for our own benefit. Absolutely, that's crazy, mm. isn't it, really? Mm. Oh my God. So, okay, we've talked about what if, yeah. and we've talked about journaling, like noticing and journaling, mm. but what final tip might you have if someone could question themselves or anything mm. to implement some sort of change or challenge for themselves? Okay, so following on really from the what if, what mm -hmm. if it could be easy? Yeah. What if something amazing could happen? What if I can change? Mm. What if whatever it is can be effortless and, you know, sort of as easy as can be? 
I think the next set, the next step would be to challenge yourself. We're kind of back at challenge. Challenge yourself to let stuff go. Mm. Let it go, whatever it is. Yeah. And one of the biggest things actually about letting go is letting go of resistance. Mm. Because resistance, like wanting something to change, if you can let that go, it kind of eases the suffering immediately. Yeah. Because otherwise we're always kind of like, you know, we're, we're I don't know, back, butting up against something the whole time. It's like, I just, I don't want it to be like this. Mm. You know, I want to be this or I don't want this. So especially if you're kind of talking in the negative, I don't want to be anxious. I don't want to be depressed. Mm. I don't want to overeat. I don't want to be uh, unhappy in my relationship. Whatever it is, if you're kind of constantly talking about it in a negative way, our brains can't imagine something that's not there. Mm. Okay. Fascinating. So, so if you think, if I say to you, don't think about a pink elephant. Oh my God. Bing, bing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pink elephant. So letting go. This is why they say about children, don't they? They say, um, don't do that. But all they hear is a do that. Mm. So don't run. And they run. Yeah. Because they can. They don't hear the don't. They hear yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. And also you can flip that. And, and it's kind of, um, I don't know if it's called positive parenting or there's positive psychology. But rather than say, you know, don't run or don't trip up. You say, oh, mind your step, okay, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. be careful. But um, going back to this thing about the brain can't imagine something that's not there, mm. it's about reframing. So if you can, you can reframe that, you can say, okay, well, I want to be calm. You know, mm. I want to be happy, content. And that comes into manifestation stuff, yeah. which I'm yeah. doing loads at the moment, yeah. and I absolutely love it. Yeah. But I think letting go, particularly of resistance, mm. just letting that go, that's not letting go of your dreams, your goals, your desires, or your needs or your wants. Mm. That's just letting go of the resistance to kind of things that aren't serving you very well. Well, I tell you what, this really resonates with me because with the diet, exercise, alcohol thing I'm telling you about, the day I'd have it or do it or slip or whatever, I'd be like, oh my God, and I'd really chastise myself about it. And actually it just made everything much more negative and much more stressful. So now I'm like, oh, like yesterday, I was like, I'm just gonna do whatever tonight and I don't care. And like today we've eaten cheese and crackers, huh? yum. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna do it. And I, forgiveness and acceptance. And actually just makes it not such a big thing in my brain, mm. which is amazing. Mm. Brilliant. Oh my God, I love this. We were talking off camera, a whole thing about parts, which I think we might have to do another thing oh, about. Oh yeah, that's corker, that is. I love it. Mm. So are you happy to come on the show again? <gasps> If you'll have me. I will. Yay. I do. <laughs> Darling, cheers. Cheers. Chinny chin chin. And thanks for joining us. Hey. You're so cute.